Welcome back. Today we're going to be looking inside my Klipsch R25C. This is the center channel version of the R15M, and it's, again, basically the same thing. Though I believe the two woofers are 4 ohm woofers that are in... I think they're in parallel, but we're, we'll take a look at the crossover once we get inside of it. So, I got called out by somebody in my R15 video for using a screwdriver to take these covers off. So I will use a plastic tool this time, even though the screwdriver works a lot easier. And I may end up reverting to it because it really is the, the best tool for the job, that specific screwdriver actually. because these other tools just don't quite work as well. There we go. This is a clip off of a Gerber knife that I've got. So to anyone who thinks that a metal tool is not the best thing for the job here, um, well, maybe try and take one apart yourself, because these nice, thin metal pry tools are a lot nicer, even though this isn't even a proper tool. So these three covers are now off. Be careful, the clips will tend to snap. It has been quite a long time since I've done a video on speakers, and I know a lot of my audience is subscribed for speaker videos, and I know that because my analytics show me that the speaker videos have the highest number of subscribers who subscribed on the video. I can't really tell what people subscribed for if they subscribe through the channel page. But regardless of that, it seems that uh, the largest chunk of my viewers are here for speakers. Which is, you know, I do feel bad for those viewers because I don't do speaker videos all that often. But hopefully when I do, they are uh, enjoyable enough to spare, or to, you know, bridge the gap between videos. So this is a speaker that I've also given the uh, blue tack dampening trick to. As you can see, this, this plastic is ABS. I'm not sure how much this actually does on these because, you know, this is actually feels much heavier duty than the one on the R15M. It's probably, I don't know, it's a little over three millimeters thick, uh, three sixteenths of an inch. And the heat sink on this is a little beefier than the, uh, the R15. Like this whole unit feels beefier than the one on the R15M which is good because uh, this has to outplay the two, um, the two channels for right and left. And I'm gonna leave that foam gasket in place there. I'll just fast forward through getting these woofers out. And uh, there we go. So let's go ahead and pull these out too. These as well have gotten the uh, the blue tack treatment. I 
I kind of did all of these at once, the R15 and the, R, well, the two R15s, the R14s, and then the R25C. I figured if I was going to do one of them, may as well do all of them. So if you open one of these up, you'll probably see a fair bit less of this stuffing foam. And that is because I uh, did a little bit of experimentation in the room of the place I used to live at. And I just played some music only out of the center channel, so it was effectively playing in mono. And I just, you know, changed the amount of foam, you know, this uh, this blanket matting. It's actually, it's blanket stuffing. Um, and I changed, I added more, took out less, and kind of found a happy spot where it sounded best in that room. I'm not going to say that it measured the best or measured perfectly flat with this in here, but it is the what sounded best to my ear in that room. So there's nothing else to see in here. It's just a standard, you know, 5 eighths inch thick MDF construction. It's identical to the R15M. Um, the difference is some of these wires uh, are a little bit different. So let's flip this thing around to the back and see what we get. That's the tag. So now we got some Phillips. Don't you love it when they uh, when they use a couple different fastener types? It makes it really fun to take apart. And then we can rip out the guts. So we'll take a look at that in a minute. Again, we'll just uh, see that this cut here, they actually did a really good job at uh, making sure that's a really nice sharp cut. And the they actually did paint the that portion. They, they paint this portion. That kind of hides that there's MDF in there if the gaps aren't perfect. So it's a nice to see them do that a little bit of an extra step. Um, they could also be doing that so that you don't see it in the seams of the, uh, I don't know, this, whatever this texture is here. So here's the woofer. It's virtually identical to the woofer out of the R15. It does have a vented pole, which is excellent to see. Otherwise, this is just standard stuff. We've seen it. A million times before. There's nothing here that really speaks to me as standing out as fantastic quality. But you know, again, a vented pole, you know, vented pole piece in there. It's nice to see. Taking a closer look at the tweeter, pretty good size heat sink on there. It has some decent heft to it given its size. This is only ABS. It isn't very resonant, which is pretty nice. And it's, you know, it's nice and thick. Can you see what's in there? So that's probably just some internal code. Now I could take this whole thing apart because there are some screws there, but I really, really don't want to do that because I probably won't get it back together. This is a titanium dome tweeter, in case I didn't mention that. And the, the woofers are plastic. It looks like it's metal, but it's plastic. They just did a really good job at making it look like metal. And the part that everyone's waiting for, the crossover. I have not looked at this one beforehand, like a while ago when I had this thing apart the first time. Um, I looked at this and I reverse engineered it, but I haven't reviewed any of that information since. And so, well, let's just say we're going to learn this one together. Here's the terminal cup. Again, ABS. Uh, these things are pretty cheap. Ferrous metal for the uh, spade connectors. Terminal blocks here. But these are, you know, half decent five-way binding posts. I've never had a problem with these. They're good enough. What I do generally have a problem with are these crappy circuit board style crossovers 
for your average listener, they're just fine and they're super cheap. But if you're trying to get more quality and performance out of your speaker, it's not really the best thing to have. So we've got a 39 microfarad cap. We've got a 3.6 and then a 4.7 ohm 10 watt resistor. I'm going to take a guess here and say that uh, that is in series with the tweeter. That is in series, and that's going to be in parallel, so that's the tweeter circuit there. Um, this is in series, and that's in parallel for the woofer. So let's get my LCR meter out and figure out what value these two inductors are. One of my more common questions on my speaker videos is how I get the values for the inductors. Well, this is how I do it. You'll get to see it firsthand here. This is a super cheap, like $15 or $20 LCR meter. It's called an LCR meter because it does L, which is uh, inductance, C, which is capacitance, and R, which is resistance, LCR. That is not to be confused with CLR. The annoying thing about this particular meter is that the wires that are supplied with it are not very user-friendly. They maybe keep them short to make it more accurate because um, longer wires would mean more resistance or there's you know some capacitive coupling between the two. I'm not really sure. So I'm going to say this is probably going to be around the... Let's check the 20 milli Henry first. Got some nice big numbers there for you to look at. Where does it have the least glare? Probably right, right there. And so this is the iron core inductor on the woofer circuit. And that would be one milli Henry. And now we can check out the air core inductor on the tweeter circuit. That's 0.47 millihenry. So now what we can do is, now that we have all the values, we can go to, let's say, a place like Parts Express or one of my more preferred um, sources of crossover components, SonicCraft. Uh, all we have to do is find these values of the components over there, make sure they fit the same spec, and order them up. All right, so let's look at the schematic for this. We have our positive coming in here, which goes in series with the iron core inductor. iron core inductor, ICI, in our case here. And that goes in, looks like, so this is our ground plane right here. That is in parallel with the 39 microfarad cap. So this was, what, 1.0 millihenry. This was 39 UF. And then our load is two hot, so they're in parallel. Ignore my terrible, terrible drawing skills, but those are the two woofers in parallel. So these must be 16 ohm, 16 ohm drivers. So that is our woofer circuit, our tweeter circuit. So we're here on the positive. Then we have this 10 watt, 4.7 ohm resistor going to this plane in here. So we'll have our positive. We're going to go through a resistor, 
seven ohm. That's a terrible ohm symbol, but we're gonna roll with it. Then from in here, we have the 3.6 microfarad cap going from here to over here. So that would be in series. And then we have a, let's see, yes, a parallel with this air core inductor from here to here. And then our load will be right there, which is from here. And then you can see how we have three wires coming into the ground here in the center. And that would be the negatives for each of the three drivers. So that's how I reverse engineer these simple crossover um, circuit boards. They're pretty simple. It's I can do it a little bit more smoothly when I'm not being filmed and trying to explain it as I'm going. You get the idea though. So then you can go on to Sonicraft or Parts Express or eBay, wherever you choose to buy your parts and just find these values and uh, get some better parts. If you would like to see me upgrade this uh, this speaker here and do some other modifications to it, let me know in the comments. Um, I have no particular need to upgrade this one, but if I see enough interest on the channel, um, I'll definitely be willing to do that. Doing one like this, since it's only one, one circuit board, so you'd only need one crossover instead of two for like a pair of bookshelf speakers. It should be in the ballpark of about 50 bucks to uh, to upgrade the crossover. Uh, I don't know what I have in stock for wiring though, so I'll have to order some more of that in, probably. And then uh, I always solder directly to the pads on the drivers, as well as these uh, the pads here on the terminal cup. I just I prefer soldering it than uh, using these spade connectors. Well here's the pile of parts. There really isn't a lot in these speakers. They're quite simple devices and it's amazing how you can get such beautiful sounds out of magnets and copper and a little bit of plastic I guess and some rubber but you know, relatively simple components put together in a very complicated way. Uh, you know, it's engineering, I guess. That's really the uh, antithesis of engineering. So I hope you enjoyed this little inspection on this uh, R25C. Um, you can go and check out my other speaker videos if you enjoyed this one. Odds are, if you're watching this, you've already seen my other videos, but I always leave a link to a playlist in the description. So... Let me know if you want to see this upgraded, and until next time, see ya.